Stop. Wait a minute. Let me put some boom in it. Hey, man, don't do. <laughs> hey, shout out, man. Shout out to our sponsor, Coldest Water. Man, you know what I'm saying? Let's show, show them what you got. Show them the goodness. You see that? You that, All right, that, guys. that peach mango over there? Let's see. Hand up the box. Whoa, bro. Look at that. This is so cool. We love, you know, if we're not short, we are no short of coldest water. We love coldest water, keeping our water cold. If I want some cold, cold water, I use my coldest water. Every time I try to put it in my little plastic jug, it never works. I always have to put it in this if I want it ice cold. You hear me? Right. Mm -hmm. Hey, and also, man, if you put in code CS in the referral link below, it will give you 10% off your order, man. Who don't like a discount? I love Forgot a discount. that it's engraved, guys. Oh, engraved oh yeah. Yes. Show, what is it showing the back? What is it? and Snuffle. Shout out. Love Sorry it. for the light. The light throwing up with it. This is and... a peach color, too, by the you way. You can get them. You can get yours engraved and say whatever your name is. You know what I'm saying? Love it. Thanks, Coldest Water. I love it. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. I wish, you know what we should have done? We should have put a White Lives Matter t-shirt <laughs> on Lizzo. Maybe we could have gotten a lot of attention about obesity <laughs> and how it's actually <laughs> killing black Americans. Stop it. Obesity is the number one killer in America, okay? I know Black Lives Matter told you it was police shootings, right? It made you think that thousands of black men were dying at the hands of police. No, no, absolutely not. I think in the year um, 2020, was it nine unarmed black men were killed by police? Nine of them? But obesity is killing people at a very high rate, and black women have the highest rates of obesity, it's so the number one killer, and of course, we sit at the top of it. Black women, 56.9% of us are classified as obese. Wow. We wow. shouldn't talk about that. You know why? That's because a it didn't number. have a t-shirt on it that said, white lives matter. You talk about criminality. No one wants to talk about it if you're not talking about a police officer, right? People don't want to talk about the fact that black people are slaughtering other black people. People don't want to talk about black on black crime. It doesn't matter because we're doing it to ourselves, right? Just like we're aborting our own babies. Applaud it, applaud it. In fact, put it in the music, put the criminality in the music and celebrate it. Give it a Grammy. Give black criminality a Grammy so that we understand that this is ours. Sit in the cool club, right? Now we know what it means to be black. Now we know what it means to not be a traitor to your own race. Murder your own race. And if you don't do it in your womb, grab a gun. Kill the guy next to you. Applause all around the world. Per the CDC, African Americans are four times more likely to be killed by a gun than the overall population. And once again, it's not a white person that is pulling the trigger. It's another black person. We account for almost 40% of all of the homicide offenders in the United States, 40% coming from the smallest piece of the population. We're talking about this, what, 7% of the population is black men and they're accounting for 40% of all of the homicides in the United States. But let's not talk about that. In fact, let's call that racist to even acknowledge that truth, to talk about the ills in our own com community. That's racism. Let's just, let's just move on for it. People yeah. love to talk about the incarceration rates, right? Because the incarceration rates allow you to understand the result without ever having to talk about the problem, mm -hmm. right? You don't have to talk about the equation. I'll just give you the answer. Black men are, are incarcerated, right? It says here that there are nearly five times the rate of black men in prison than white people. Oh, perfect narrative. It must be racism. No, it has nothing to do with the fact that we're the most murderous group in America. It has nothing to do with that. Of course, one plus one equals two, but let's focus on the two and not the one plus one. Let's focus on everything except for the fact that we also know that these individuals that are ending up in prison or these individuals that are ending up killed or these infants that are being taken out of their mother's own womb, they're all coming from broken families, families that had been strategically broken down in a car. So that's what I was about to say. Okay, I, I can agree with quite a bit of what she's saying, but then let's get back to the prerequisite and the root cause of these people who are murdering and who are in jail and who are raising this rate. You know, why are they making these decisions? Where are they coming from? And then on the flip side of that, how long is being a product of your environment going to allow you to use that as an excuse as to why you can't change your life? Because the resiliency of a child is unbelievable. Yeah. And if you have one person 
and everybody has at least one person, no matter where in your lifespan you linked up with this person, connect, cross paths, you have this one person. Yeah. But let's just say you're not. You don't. Yeah. When does a person decide for them own for their own selves that they don't want to be a product of the environment? And then what do they do to make a better decision to not end up like uncle, daddy, brother, neighbor, friend, you know, cousin? That's my that's my uh, question. But OK, she's mm. she's saying it because I was like, OK, but we can't negate the fact that they are from, you know, certain type of environments that are, you know, perpetuating that type of behavior. But that's what she's. Same. Yeah, she got that. She got to it. Yeah. Yeah, she just got to it. Sure, that promotes, further promotes the breakdown of family, that corrodes the value of women, that corrodes the value of men. But hey, that wasn't wearing a White Lives Matter t shirt. So who cares? Who cares? Who cares if 20 million black babies are dead? Who cares if half of our black men are locked up? Who cares if Black women, half of them are clinically obese and spelling out their own death sentences. Who cares if we represent 40 percent of all homicide offenders? It doesn't matter because we didn't put it in a Black Lives Matter T. You know what else does it matter? It doesn't matter at all. The education statistics don't even pay attention to the fact that 74 percent of black boys in California can't pass a basic reading exam. Mm. You know why? Because we love ignorance. We should celebrate ignorance, right? Who cares that across five schools in an inner city like Baltimore, they couldn't find a single child that was proficient in reading and in writing? Who cares? Wow. Who cares that three out of four black boys in California schools cannot meet writing standards? Who cares? It's not in a White Lives Matter t-shirt, t so we won't talk about the fact that nearly 80% of black boys in the fourth grade failed to meet state reading standards. None of that stuff, for whatever reason, resonates. No one's ever outraged. It never trends on Twitter. Last night, White Lives Matter was trending on Twitter because Kanye West had the nerve and the gall to put that T-shirt on. White Lives Matter. Now, now the, the press, how dare you? How dare you? What a form of engaging in white supremacy. None of this that I just read to you is white supremacy, but the T-shirt is a form of white supremacy. Hmm. You know what the problem is? The problem is not what's happening inside the households or what's happening on the streets or the slaughtering that's taken place. The problem is not the women that have been trained to kill their own offspring, not to raise their sons, the men that are on the streets killing one another and putting out music that encourages their offspring to do the same. The real problem in Black America is that Kanye and Candace on a White Lives Matter t-shirt. Mm. So let's focus on that instead. And that's all I have to say about that. Okay, guys, before we continue, I want to talk to you about Front Page Magazine. Founded by conservative writer David Horowitz, Front Page Magazine has spent over two decades combating the radical left's efforts to destroy America. There are two new podcasts, The Right Take with Mark Tapson and The Jason Hill Show, offer riveting interviews and insightful coverage of politics, culture, and current events. It takes a village to combat the radical left's efforts to destroy America. That's why, as a fan of my show, you should also check out these guys over at Front Page Magazine by visiting frontpagemag.com. And while you're there, you can support their cause by making a tax-deductible donation. Inside every progressive is a totalitarian screaming to get out, and no one understands that better than the team over at Front Page Magazine. Go check out frontpagemag.com today. Do you know what else I uh, said to Kanye over breakfast? I was saying to him that when I look at people and when I speak to people, I actually acknowledge that so many of them are just bots. When I say bots, I'm not talking about Instagram bots or Twitter bots. I'm talking about individuals yeah. who are so clearly programmed. Yeah. It's like an algorithm and they all have the same algorithm. They're like droids that are walking around in society. Yeah. BLM, check. You know what I mean? The little flag, the Ukraine flag, check. The the LGBT flag, and they're all just the same person being processed over and over and over again. And that's how you know that the system is feeding them information and they don't even yeah. realize, they don't even mean, they don't even mean to be vicious and angry because they are, they've just become the algorithm, yeah. right? These yeah. people are quite literally responding to an algorithm that has been decided for them, mm -hmm. that has been programmed into them. And that is how I feel right now as I'm taking a look at some of these comments. 
It's they don't even realize that these comments are not their own. These aren't their own perspectives. These are perspectives that are passed around the world. And remember I said that how it's it's lack of education and it's just it's emotionalism with with a little bit of information from somebody else. Mm -hmm. And that just goes around mm -hmm. because if you ask a hardcore fact to somebody who's emotional, what are they going to do? They're going to have a little bit of information and then all and 90 percent emotional. And anybody that do that, they don't know what they're talking about and you have to discard them. So it's all about education versus sensation and emotionalism. Educate yourself. And I was going to say, too, like reputable resources. I want to look in her comments to see like what she just re she recently she sources from. stated um, the CDC. But I'm sure she's going to um, your government resources who have all the statistics, you know, census, um, your, your CDCs, your national, um, your NHIs, national health, you know, um, administration, you know, institutions and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But I want to know. Like, where is she getting her, her hardcore data. facts? Because the newspaper, the media, it's the same thing. You yeah. really have to comb through that very well to, to determine. But, like, where are she getting, where her. is she getting her statistics from? Okay. Mm -hmm. And they think it's their own. They have one person who said regarding us wearing the White Lives Matter t-shirts last night, this is Eaton Thomas. He said, the reason why there is no need for you or Kanye West or anyone else to wear a White Lives Matter shirt is because never in the history of this country has the value that America puts on white lives ever been in question. Okay, so why are you mad when we wear it? Eaton, why are you mad? What are you upset about? If it's not even a question, then why are you bothered? Why did it ruffle your feathers? Just if it's not even a question, right? If the air I breathe is not even a question. I don't protest when somebody is just breathing air. You have Darren Trank who wrote, Candace, you don't get that you're just undermining a movement by imitating their name and logo. You're simply not worth anyone's time. No, Darren, what you don't understand is that I intend to undermine the movement. That's what I've been doing. I've been undermining the Black Lives Matter movement because I'm not an idiot. And it's clear that the result of the Black Lives Matter movement has been more destruction for black lives. It is clear that black people are being programmed in the same way that you have been programmed to think that the movement is for you when it's not. It has stripped our... So my question is, if people are learning, if you're getting information about an organization that is corrupt and you still support the organization, I don't care what the organization say they stand for. If it's corrupt, it is corrupt. Yeah. Why do you still defend the organization that's corrupt? Yeah. That's the problem that I keep seeming to have. You keep, now that you found out that the people who have headed this organization have not done a zip dollar dime towards whatever the movement is supposed to be supporting, what has changed since this organization? But yet they have, pro I mean, so I don't understand what the, so that's the bot she's talking about. You, you know, you know, it's, it's corrupt. But it's okay to support corruption and donate your money to a cause that's going to be putting it in real estate. And ain't no telling what else they're doing behind closed doors. Living life. Or now, maybe it's better. Maybe they have new, you know, presidents or people who are running the organization who really care about black lives. And now they're doing something to really make it where it's beneficial. They're making some changes in the schools, in the prison system, in low-income families, in reading, in test scores you know, and so forth and so on, mental health. Okay, parent um, communication, the lack of parental support in, in when it comes to PTA and blah, blah, blah. So how are they contributing? Where is this money going to these things and who are they reaching out to? I mean, so I don't understand why people are continuously supporting an organization they will have that to, is not, has not been holding up their end of the they, deal. They would have to completely... It rebirth that whole concept yeah whole i think i think of, i think it needs to be re, you know reevaluated I, I really do